Hey guys, James here, and I wanted to talk today about mapping products and services to income accounts to track your income on your profit and loss statement. So when we, you have a profit and loss statement or when you're making sales of products and services, you're not going to see that product and service, each and every product and service, as its own on that profit and loss statement. Obviously, you can run a report for um, sales by product and see your sales by product, but sometimes we want to go ahead and make sure that we're breaking down our sales on particular items into particular income accounts. A great example of this is maybe you run a carpet cleaning business. So you have upholstery cleaning, carpet cleaning, um, so on and so forth. With doing stuff like that, we want to see the income that you're making from your upholstery cleaning versus your carpet cleaning versus your tile cleaning, so on. Maybe you're in an HVAC industry and you want to see your installs versus your service. Um, maybe you are, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe you're in a maid industry or something like that and you might want to see your commercial versus your residential. Um, stuff like that, we want to go ahead and see your income broken down by kind of the main areas that you sell. So the main way to do this, if we're not tracking both income and expense breakdown, which is going to be class tracking, I'll do another video on that. But the main way to do this, if we just want to see this income breakdown, is by setting up invent or excuse me, product and service sales income accounts under your products and services in QuickBooks Online. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come here to sales and go to products and services. When we do this, it brings us to a list of all of our products and services. Then we find our product and service that we want to use. We go ahead and click edit. And we're going to see an income account here. So we've got AC filter replacement. And it's currently going to our design income account. Now that doesn't make too much sense. So let's take a look at our income accounts and see if we've got something that makes sense. So we got AC filter replacement. That would be a service to me. So we want to go ahead on, under this income account here and choose services. Once we do that, that's going to allow us to anytime we use that AC filter replacement product and service going forward, we're going to go ahead and have that income go to the services account once we hit save and close. However, if we want to update any of the historical transactions, so any transactions that we've done in the past, we need to check mark this box. That's going to change any past transactions also into that income account and not to the other one. Now in saying that, if you've decided that now instead of tracking everything um, as design, you now want to track it as services, but you want to keep all the old stuff as design, do not check this box. Otherwise, you're going to update all that old stuff too. But if you do want to update that old stuff, make sure you check this before you click save and close. Otherwise, all of your historical stuff will not change. So we're going to go ahead and click save and close. So now going forward, whenever we use that product, it's going to go ahead and track it into that income account for us, which is really great. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're not using QuickBooks to invoice and everything like that, and you're using a third party, most of these third parties will integrate by pushing in a product and service by matching the display name, which is this field right here, exactly with what you have in that third party application. So that's going to be like service Titan, house call, Noify, stuff like that. That's how they're going to match everything up here. Beyond that, what that ultimately ends up meaning for us is that if we use that product and service in one of those platforms and we add anything to the display name, anything to the item name, anything to that service in those third party applications, it's going to view it as a wholly separate and new product and service and it will not match up to the mapping that you have here. So anytime you're using a third party outside service, make sure that you are not excuse me, make sure that you are not adding anything to the item name. Otherwise, it's not going to follow the mapping that you set up in QuickBooks. On top of that, with third-party services, if they do not allow you to do this mapping through the native system, which most don't, you're going to have to add the product and service in that system. Once you use it the first time, it'll push it over into QuickBooks for the first time as a new product and service. 
So once we go ahead and push that over into QuickBooks for the first time, now we'll have to come in here and we'll have to edit it, change our income account, update the historical transactions and save. From then forward, you won't have an issue, but the first time you're using your product and service, you're gonna have to do that. So guys, if you wanna start doing that, make sure that you go through, you edit these, you get them going to the correct income accounts, you, that way when it goes to your profit and loss, you're gonna see that breakdown the way that you want to. As always, if you've got any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to give us a call, shoot us an email, anything like that, and we'll be happy to help you out. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.